Hello there, everyone. How are you doing? It's January 6th, 2021, a big day. Lots happened today, and all those people, every, if you've been emailing me or you're, you're concerned because you're trying to run payroll for your business and you're like, Ken, where's my file? I have good news for you. I've run as much checking as I need to do right now on this file to, to make sure things are working properly, and I'm now putting it up for sale like I said I was going to do earlier today. And I'm going to show you in this video, if you're interested in this product, one, how much is it going to cost? Um, what kind of enhancements might you need? How does this thing work? And I'm going to do this as fast as I can because I know long videos are boring, right? So what you're looking at is the big, huge 50 state version. This one's not actually for sale yet because I'm still doing a lot of work on it. But your version, let's say you want to, let's say you're in one of these states right here. What's, what's interesting about all these states? They don't have state tax. I have sorted out everything that doesn't have state tax. If you want a version of this file in one of those states that doesn't have state tax, it's $100 and you're good to go. I'm going to ask you, hey, what's your pay period? Meaning, like, how frequently do you pay your employees? And I'm going to leave all this open. Everything's unlocked in the file. You can do what you want to with it after the fact. I, I proliferate knowledge, like make like, your life easier. But, but there's some complex things about setting it up initially, so I always ask everybody a round of questions. And I say, hey, what's your pay period frequency? Is it weekly? Because we're looking at a weekly file right now. If it's bi-weekly and you click that, a bunch of stuff's going to change, and we need to check things, and we need to alter the dates of your pay period, which are over here. And when how, how many days after your pay period do you issue the paycheck? One, two, whoops, two. We have to alter all these things. I have to make sure that we do it right, and it's a little too complicated for you to do yourself. However, if you're interested in the full 50-state version because you're trying to do payroll for businesses all over the country and you want to create copies of this file, that is not 100 bucks. It is more expensive because there's going to be more going on. Um, but uh, I will train you and show you tutorials about how to do this yourself so that you don't have to call me every time you need to make a copy of the file. Now, so I'm going to ask those questions about your pay period and about um, what the dates are exactly. Also, I'm going to ask you how many employees. The $100 version is 10 employees long. Now, it's not that difficult to extend employees. However, if I start building this thing for hundreds of employees, the file gets enormous, and it's something that can be done, but not something that I just sell out for 100 bucks. Like that, that call takes a little more work. So you get a 10 employee version. If you need a few more employees, I'll probably just add them for you. But if you need more employees and you're going to be using this more extensively, it's not 100 bucks. It's more money. Now, um, if you want one state, just one. It's only $50 for that additional state. If it's a state that has state tax, all the states that don't have state tax are obviously free. Even though Washington has its own taxes, even though they don't have state withholding tax, they have other taxes, Washington state does. Um, all right, so say that you're in a state with tax. Let's say that you're in Georgia, right? So it'll be $150 for this file. Same questions I'm gonna ask you. Um, and I'll, I'll then have all the Georgia stuff in here, including all of the reporting relating to Georgia, because if you're not using this for the full 50 state version, this thing needs to be customized just for Georgia. Like you don't care about Oregon Workers Benefit Fund or transit tax or Washington unemployment contribution. I think that might be or Pennsylvania. You, you, you're not worried about that. You're worried about just Georgia withholding. So that's 150 bucks. If you want the 50 state version, you're doing all this stuff, you got to contact me because there's a lot going on there. So now for the people who want version, just run around, do what you want, do what you do. Here's how you use this file. We're three minutes and we're rolling. Okay. Social security number if you want or not, up to you. Now this question is actually should, should be over here, but for some reason it's right here. It's, hey, did this person fill out a new W-4 for 2020 or 2020 or 2021 or are they on an old W-4? There's two different questions you got to answer. Let's say this first person is not on a new W-4. They're on an old one. That's easy. Just put their allowances right here. How many were there? Okay, no problem. Is the person married? Just, just a yes or no. Like civil union counts as a yes. Um, now, what's going on here is the state that you're in, we're looking at Alaska right now. These titles are related to whatever state you're choosing here. If you wanted to look at Florida, Florida's nothing, nothing's used anyway. Now, Georgia, there's something used. That I know. Georgia wants a dependent and allowance amount, but none of these other things want anything. So you don't have to worry about that. We're not going to worry about local tax in this example. And you don't have to worry about anything really over here because that person didn't fill out a 2020 W-4. We're going to go over the next person with the 2020 W-4 in a second. And then uh, other stuff you can grab, and there's a sick balance thing I can build in there too that we should talk about. All right, now, 
that's what you needed for employee number one. Well, employee number two here, whatever, uh, is going to be a yes on filling out a 2020 before. And this goes black, meaning don't use that. Still want to know if the person's married or not. Florida man is not married. Um, but now a bunch of stuff over here is going to pop up in red. So you have to answer these two questions, and you might be putting other stuff in here if it's relevant. Did this person check the box on the W on the I did a whole video on a 2020 before I'm not going to talk about it silly W whatever and then you got to do the failing the filing status which in this case is probably single so we've just entered in a couple employees um, all right won't worry about Georgia because we're doing just the non-state version right or non-state tax version so you've got your employees in there what can you do with them you can do all kinds of things you can uh, record their compensation in a daily form. This is called the daily entry sheet, and in this sheet, you're going to be able to choose your employees. Okay, Lumberjack is going to work, it's going to work a day, and Sunny Shine is going to work a day. And what day are they going to work? Let's have them work today. Um, or well, today would be the sixth, but whatever. We're saying they worked on New Year's Day. You can put in hours for them. Maybe they had some overtime hours. You can put in project types and put different projects and stuff over here. To pay them by some type of project or commission type, right? Say this one, you know, pays a thousand dollars, whatever, big sale, whatever it is. That will all of a sudden become a choice here. And you can choose big sale, and it's gonna automatically pay that person a thousand bucks every time you choose whatever project they did on the day. Uh, there are clients, you can keep all kinds of stuff in here. You can enter in time optionally, and it will figure it out if you do it that way. If you enter it in, I think, military time. To like say that person worked from two till twenty-two, they would have had eight hours, and you could put minutes there. Thirty. Oh, my head is probably in the way. Jesus, what am I doing? Sorry. Um, that you can put time in over here. Um, uh, and type in stuff like that. And yeah, I typed it in like this. I did like fourteen com with semicolon like that. That that's the way you do time, and it will figure out how many hours if you want to use that, and then put it in here. Um, so there's that. You can put in their stuff by day. Then after you've done that, then you want to look at your main payroll cube. This is going to have all the data for all the employees. You can, this has all the formulas for everything. There's a million formulas in here. You, you won't get this. You'll get just the federal stuff and stuff you need for that and, and none of the additional states. But you can filter by this very first pay period here of the year. It's January 9th, maybe. Let's see. And... Is that not the case? That we don't have a January 9th pay period. What's going on here? 1 7. We are witnessing an error in the file as I was preparing this. What's going on? Are our pay periods off? Did that ha Oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. Remember when we were messing around? 2 7. Let's see what we did here. We have the first day of the year starts on the 3rd of January. That's not going to work. Let's move that back. Let's say the first day of the year started on the first day of the year. How about that? In that instance, I think that's going to fix everything. Let's check. Yep, that fixed everything. So all, all of a sudden became 1-7. Um, so, what I just did is showing you kind of how you all, all update dates and stuff to make sure they're right. So what has happened is we're looking at the very first pay period of the year for these 10 employees. It's a, it's a weekly payer, as we mentioned. The hours that we entered it on the daily sheet came in automatically over here and subtotaled appropriately, as well as any additional pay for projects. This is popping up in red because it, sorry, this is popping up in red because, let's do this. It's going to be better for the camera. Try that. Um, so this right here popped up in red because it sees hours and it sees no hourly rate. So if you hadn't pre-populated this with an hourly rate, you should do that now. Does this person have any additional bonus or salary amount? Did they have any garnishments or reimbursed for something? What's the check number? If you're going to be printing checks, you can put it there. Does this person have a 401k percentage that comes out? Health insurance deductions, life insurance. These are all things that are, by the way, are finalized in the publication 15, which is not finalized yet. So I'm selling you a file that could potentially have adjustments to it later. And I've just decided a lot's happened today and we have to start going into 2021. So it's just time to release this. And if we have to update things as we go, then so be it. Built, I built this to make it easy enough to do that. Now, um, all those things that you can put in there are going to create a paycheck. 
and the paycheck is right here in your pay stubs. You can choose the name and choose the date and you get the paycheck. And all those things that we just did just popped up here. Looks like this person has $87 taken out for federal. They're in Alaska, so there's no state tax, but they have reimbursements. What happens if this person was in Washington State instead? What would happen? The answer is, well, they would also get hit with this paid family and medical leave amount with a percentage on there. So there is some tax related to Washington. So Washington really shouldn't be free, but I guess I'm throwing it in just because I like the state. Um, all that stuff just pops up. Do we have reports? Of course we have reports. We have all the reports you could possibly want. You've got your 941. You can look at it by quarter. You can look at it by month. You have to look at just one. If you do this, it's going to say, hey, you're screwed up. Don't do that. Just choose one thing because it wants to know what one you're choosing. You can do just pay period. Everything changes over here, by the way. And these are totally dynamic. You can, make, you can update them and make them better. State reports. Not going to have too much to worry about. Oh, wait a minute. We have Washington State to worry about. Where are you, Washington State? Did you go up here? Where'd you go? Everything got resorted. Um, so yeah, here's here are your state reports. Here's other pivots. You can refresh everything, and we can make a report to do anything we want in here. We're not going to show how to do that now. There's a sample 940 for unemployment, but don't file it. But it's it'll break out the numbers for you automatically. So that's cool. Yep, yeah, that'll work. And then there's sample W2s. Choose a person's name. It's going to set up the W2 for you, so you can file them online. All right. So we are 11 minutes in, not too bad. So $100 for a no state tax version with all of these states you see here and Alaska. $150 when you choose your state. Uh, 50 state version, talk to me individually. And anything other than that, when you need additional stuff done, when you want to change this daily entry sheet around and make it be customized, when you want to change this thing around and make it be perfectly customized for all the types of deductions you might have or the way that you pay people, it's not that difficult to do because of the structure of the file. But I do have to do that for you. And that is billed additionally hourly. But depending on what you need, I've probably done it before. Um, i also done files for businesses in different types of sectors, which require some different forms. I'm not going to talk about that here. Just the main file for if you've got a small business, uh, it's just going to make your life so ridiculously easy. It's inexpensive. It's working. And um, yeah. So, all right, guys. Good luck. Payroll should be easy. Join us. Make it so.